Shout out to James Nealon again for that theme song at Cubby Happenings on Twitter. James Nealon, member of The Reason, great band, check him out, yeah. Episode 6 of Back to Degrassi, which I'll probably say again when the episode actually starts, not just the intro. Uh, rumor has it, <sighs> rumor has it, what an episode, <laughs> but a lot of heavy, heavy adolescent sexual dream sequences which is not something you often see in television, so it's pretty crazy. 1987, inside Caitlin's mind, kind of. <laughs> it, it's interesting. We, you know, we get into it. A great couple of great guests to get into this uh, topic. Laura DeLabio and Bobby Knuff. Both were, we recorded on Thanksgiving Sunday. None of us with our families. <laughs> Laura, Laura's in, in London now. She's going away to London this week. She's there right now. She's having a great time. Thanks, Laura, for doing it. Bobby, I think he's... Bobby's probably in Toronto. He's got my... I lent him a comic book. Probably get it back. I think I'm going to get a book from him. I want to thank both of them for doing the podcast. You can uh, check them out on Twitter. At the end, at the end, they plug it. I don't have it up right now, so I can't remember. <laughs> I don't want to say. Uh, this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. You can support the podcast. Get a free audio book download at audibletrial.com slash back to Degrassi. You can get any so many books, so many books on there. Yeah, I have one right now. I need to, I need to claim a book download. There's actually no commitment. You can just sign up, get the free download. You don't have to stay on, but it's uh, it's cool if you do. I think I'm gonna might check it out next month too, because I think you get additional credits after the first uh, trial month. So that'd be kind of cool. I, I'm commuting a lot, so it's you know it's always good to have stuff to listen to outside of podcasts as well. All right. Um, I was gonna say I'm I'm performing at the Red Rocket Cafe on Saturday. There's a stand up show there. There's a lot of pros on that show. Uh, a lot of open micers like me too. It'll be a good show though. You can check that out at the Red Rocket Cafe. Check it on the internet. This show starts at eight. It's a good time. It's a good show every week. All right. Uh, so this is episode six of Rumor Has It. I'm gonna get into it. Here's my theme song for the show. I'll try, I'll try that. Back to life. Back to Degrassi, back to life, back to Degrassi, back to life, back to Degrassi, back to life, back to Degrassi. Wake up in the morning, feeling shine on the UG. I gotta go to the school. <laughs> Wait, what's <one second. laughs> that? Get it, is it? <laughs> you, just, you, just, you do a little pantomime there. <laughs> just read it. That's that's good. You're ready for this podcast. This is episode six of Back to Degrassi. I'm the host Tim McDonald. Every episode I watch an episode of the classic '80s Back to Degrassi with two guests. This week I have two comedian friends on. Uh, first off, I have a comedian. She works all over Toronto. She's open for Chris Gethard and James Adomian, Laura Delabio. Hello, thank yeah. you for having me. Glad to have you here. I know you were excited to do the show. <laughs> Super wicked. excited, way too excited. <laughs> My other guest today is a Yucks comic. He's open for Maria Bamford and Greg Proops. Bobby Knopf is here. Yay, hello. Thank you for having <laughs> me as well. <laughs> Thanks for coming over. Every time I say your last name, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel I feel like I could butcher it for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard it and said it a bunch of times, too, but it still gives me trouble. Got two challenging ones today. <laughs> oft butchered. Is that why you chose the two of us? <laughs> yeah, get it over at one. It's because your name... 
<laughs> just with the, I feel like I could butcher it. Someone <laughs> once introduced me as Lauren Diaboli. <laughs> I want to make a super cut of all the times Lauren my name's Diaboli. been said wrong. I could open my ex- As long great. as my K is pronounced, I'm happy. Yeah. It's important. That's important. Yeah. I hate when my name is spelled out with a, because it's like big M, little C, big mm-hmm. D. So I get mad when it goes like. Mac. Yeah, Mac. Mm, get or like. A out of there. I'll even like, even if it's a big C, I'm like kind of offended by that. <laughs> I want. Well, who does that? That's. Not Sometimes how you people spell. do it. They just want a bunch of capitals together. <laughs> They're gonna rock it. So this is this is episode six. This one is uh, it's an interesting mix between the A and the B story. It's called Rumor Has It. First aired February twenty second, nineteen eighty seven. Well, the year wow. I was born. <laughs> twenty seven years ago. That's right. That's crazy. This episode is as old as you, Bob. Yes, <laughs> it's one. It one has aged just as well. <laughs> I, must, I must say. I must say. Uh, did you guys so Bobby tell me about your Degrassi background? How when were you into the show? When uh, were you watching it when you were younger? I watched it younger than I should have probably not probably, but just because my I had older siblings who watched it every day after school, and being the youngest, I was never allowed to choose what we were watching. So, <laughs> but I was happy. It was Days of Our Lives or Degrassi, and so I was happy with Degrassi. That, that was, was the better option. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I remember like watching like all of it with my brother and sister. <laughs> Laura, where was your Degrassi background like? Um, I saw some of it when it was originally on junior high, like probably not in 1987, but in the Mm -hmm. latter couple of years, I would have occasionally seen it when it was new. And then like so many others, when it was constantly on in the afternoons, that's when I watched the entire series many, 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 many times through. (laughs) See, that's what I'm calling the second wave of Degrassi. Because like you, you weren't watching it when it was like 1987 and these were Mm -hmm. airing. You were watching it. That was after school years. Both yeah, of you guys the ni- are in, in that second mid-90s, wave. Yeah. yeah, in the mid late nineties there for a long time until like two thousand and one. And that's where most people my age remember watching it. It's rare for me to I know a few people who are older and watched yeah, it. Degrassi High I watched while it was airing. Mm-hmm. But I'm also old, so <laughs> <laughs> And my brother would also like tape a lot of stuff it was in that time of like vcrs and like tapes and you just tape tv and you're like i have this forever now (laughs) right this will always be good yeah it was like the poor man's like tv series on dvd but just a stack of tapes so we'd always like watch those and like those are awesome to watch with old commercials too (laughs) like well, I don't know if you guys know this. But what I do is we transfer people's old home movies to digital formats. So oh, yeah. a lot of times, like their tapes, that'll be what it happened to them. They'll have like a bit of home movie, and then, and then just whatever they <laughs> taped on, like Law and Order this week. Like, oh yeah, this is a good one. It's kind of a bummer that we we make people pay for that transfer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good business. Canada Home Movies, check it out. <laughs> We're pretty awesome. So this episode, man, rumor has it. Which we which we noticed was spelled the American way. Yes, there was I some was question very about disappointed, that. especially in the yeah, like you said, the first season. It should have been hardcore yeah. Canadian. I don't know. That, that that surprised me. Everyone got a little freaked out there. Uh, <laughs> like the computer did a thing, and I we don't know a, what's happening. We got a computer warning while recording, but everything is okay. You are still listening to us. <laughs> There's a gigantic monitor behind him, and so what would normally be a little pop-up box is this looming thing. It's just, it's just saying, you're doing great. But yeah. It's like an eclipse happened behind you. I couldn't tear my eyes away. I'm glad you guys are there. You guys are like my, you know, my backup technicians, too. <laughs> yeah, when you see our eyes, like, oh, God. I heard it happen in my ears, but then I saw your face, and I'm like, oh, we got to see. Bobby, what a pro. He kept going, though, too. I'm, just, I'm trying to talk. So basically, it was the, the American spelling. But these are DVD releases... So maybe we were thinking because earlier on it seemed like they would use American spelling later on, but earlier that we thought it was Canadian. But maybe because this is from the DVD, but it still looked pretty old. The writing, like, <laughs> yeah, it didn't look like like. And that would be such a weird one. Like someone get it, go in there and get rid of that you. Like yeah, if you're gonna update the uh, the the titling, you may as well update with some modern titling. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's no need to just keep the unless old that's one. like someone who's an expert at that. Like no man, I make those titles look like it was from 1987. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've gotten that down. Like, I'll match it. Yeah. Uh, so this episode opens uh, with Miss Avery teaching uh, just a lesson in class about female figures, you know, saying how the patriarchy has let them down and they're not mm-hmm. getting their due. Caitlin is loving it in this dream. <laughs> this is my favorite teacher. She makes everything so interesting. <laughs> and it seems like it's just a normal class, but then things get weird when Caitlin uh, gets called up to the front 
to Miss Avery's lap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Puts her in. Very her intimate. <laughs> and she just says, uh, the native studies paper you wrote was so amazing. You're the best student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Kathleen starts accusing her of being gay and Susie follows and the whole class whole breaks class, into a she's chant. She's a lesbian. Yeah. She's gay. Uh, Miss Avery's gay, you know. <laughs> and they all say it. And it's just, uh, it's just so indicative of Degrassi like uh, like the 1987 and like this is like pretty progressive stuff here like you're yeah saying. for like a kid not a kid show but like yeah it's a kid yeah, show yeah, yeah to a degree yeah, yeah, yeah. These are, I want to talk about how they made the room look though because I mean you said it, so- it sounds like a normal lesson it sort of sounds like one but they have Every, all the kids are wearing blue, but Caitlin and Ms. Avery are in pink. Oh, I didn't even oh, notice I didn't pick that. up on that. I just noticed what all the... What is wrong with you? <laughs> I noticed all the flowers. Oh, yeah, there's flowers everywhere, which is oh. very vaginal. I got that reference um, when her table was covered. I'm like, she's in a sea all of vaginas. All around the classroom like. and all of the posters, because there's so many posters in this show always, like the hand-drawn bristle boards, but they're all blank blue. Oh. And then the, the chalkboard just has drawings of flowers on it. There's... There's no class materials up. It's just this pink, blue, and white. I could just see the flowers all yeah. over the desk because I was like, "This is there's a lot of flowers." So okay, <laughs> so you guys are both colorblind. We just learned in the course of this podcast. I didn't realize that. They, that's funny that they yeah. had it like segregated by the man. This fucking set it's, dressing no, those, was those, amazing. Those dream sequences are are legit. <laughs> they were they were working on this yeah. show like they and I love that they world. did the that camera effect with the pull yeah. back or whatever the, the uh, it's the the hitchcock effect right? yeah. like from vertigo where it's vertigo and then they do it in jaws when he's like Whoa. yeah like, it's like pushing pushing the camera in while you're while zooming, zooming out yeah, yeah. yeah so or in just I was like, the, and it was, this is some like awesome <laughs> camera to work uh degrassi like they would that's Lots of it. dramatic lighting in this episode too that's because like the canadian film industry they would be you know, it would be people who would be working on movies, too. But like, they had their other job. So, like, they put some work in. They were oh, trying yeah, to like, shoot. I'm gonna, I went to film school. I'm going to make this shot worth it. Like, in this uh, lesbian <laughs> dream sequence. <laughs> and they nailed it. Uh, then you realize it is the dream sequence when Caitlin just wakes up. And it, well, I mean, we realized before then. But they, <laughs> yeah, yeah, as soon review. as the touching happened, you're just like, I hope yeah. this is. Like... <laughs> Although I wouldn't put it past Degrassi. But they make reveal in the show where she wakes up. But I would have yeah. loved to see it reverse if this wasn't, like, a lesbian, like, with a, the a female character like a guy and in that dream like what would the, what yeah. would be all over his desk yeah. you know what I mean it was like oh Joey and like a bunch of hot dogs everywhere or something cause like <laughs> just cause that's what I was wondering cause like the flowers were definitely like this is vaginal so if it was a yeah. dude and would they like would they just be in a gym class or like in wrestling like oh yeah let's get that move I was just like I'm glad they went lesbian just to keep it more like very soft, soft. yeah exactly <laughs> soft and, yeah it is it is specifically they're dealing with lesbians here too i mean i think they're trying to cover homophobia as well because they do say gay and they bounce mm-hmm. back and forth like but i think which, it was a gentler in with the subject matter specifically the dreams like in the yeah. in the it would be more difficult and the then that gen. way to the tiptoe of like women kiss because mm-hmm. if that was a dude yeah. thing unless we were it was in set in france like yeah. unless one of them had like an excursion to france and mm-hmm. he was like why are the guys kissing there's like, more a- ambiguity and this was 87 so it's mm-hmm. like they they dealt with the gay character in Degrassi high I know but that was mm-hmm. getting a bit later but in the 80s I don't know if just with with AIDS if they wanted to even mm-hmm. like go into dealing with gay men at all if like let's just go with lesbians yeah yeah <laughs> and then in the end they're like it's kind of like they keep it still like yeah who knows you know yeah, what I they mean do, like, they do keep yeah. wondering a little it, bit that was where I was like why didn't they commit and make someone one it mm-hmm. was that a stipulation of like Nope, we could talk about it, but one can officially say, yes, I am. I guess they were just kind of treading the line as best they could. Because they, yeah. they, they're, the whole thing was like, what's the big deal? Because yeah. then at the end it was like, I am going to go blow, like, uh, <laughs> fucking Saturday Night Fever suit wearing... Uh... Radage? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's let's get right back to for the theme song, actually, because when it has a great kick into Out of the Dream. How do you guys... <laughs> yeah, I love it! <laughs> How do you guys feel about the theme song? Just like, does it take you back? I oh, think- as soon as I hear it, it just like shoots me back to like, yes. It <laughs> makes me so happy. Just so happy. Okay. And that, the way that it's like edited, I love that, like, that way of oh. like moving picture mm-hmm. kind of like those old cartoons, like, yeah, that like the raccoon cartoons or whatever, where it was like a picture and then they'd kind of be moving. Yeah. Like, I love that. Like, it's like a stop motion kind of thing. Kind of it's it's yeah. like when it's like you see the animation where I think it's called pixelization when it happens, like frame, shorter yeah, frame yeah, like blurred like that. into another frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, that old school. Like, <laughs> so it drops, and then uh, so out of the theme song, the day starts outside the school, and Susie, or sorry, yeah, Susie and Caitlin. 
are talking about the sleepover that they're going to have that day, and they see uh, Rick, and boy, oh boy, does Caitlin have a big crush on Rick. <laughs> Rick. Susie points it out. He's the Rick's the coolest though. I'm always bummed that he left the show. Do you guys do you guys remember Rick that oh, much yeah. from it? Yeah. I can't remember specifically because mm-hmm. I never like I watched it all when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And it just spoke to a lot of my memories <laughs> no way. So I was just like, oh no. They said a really weird thing about the sleepover though, and I don't know why they even bothered to include this, but it's like like Caitlin, are your parents okay with the sleeping over even though they're away? It's like, yeah, it's fine. My brother's there. Like, why? <laughs> Well, wait, why are her friend's parents okay? <laughs> like, sure, just go stay with this girl and her much older Your brother. brother. Like, yeah. But it doesn't factor into the episode at all, so I just don't understand why Even, that line is Like, there. why couldn't her parents just be home for that yeah, weekend? It's what completely it? irrelevant. Yeah. I guess they wanted to make me like, anything could happen. At this yeah, they're going to let out. Like, Avery's going to come over with a bunch of flowers. There's, no, there's just no payoff to that at all. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is a weird setup. I guess it's just... Uh, it's just... It's just so they can make the prank phone calls. That's the only I reason guess. that they oh, do yeah, it. Oh yeah, because that's the yeah. parents, if the parents were home, like they'd be like, "What are you doing on the phone?" Like, <laughs> that that's the only reason that's, I can. But think But then it's of. like, who was gonna think in that episode? Like, if their parents were home, they wouldn't be allowed to do this. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then right then, as they're pulling up to the school, so is Miss Avery with her her lady friend and Kathleen mm. and Annie, another character who's hard to remember because she's yeah. only in these early episodes. Kathleen and Annie are judging her because there's rumors of Miss Avery being gay. And I love that line. She says, I've never seen her with any man. It's like, yeah. <laughs> are all the other teachers just like making out heterosexually <laughs> in between classes? Like, yep, straight, straight. But like, mm, I don't know about you. Yeah. Like, I don't get her obsession with everyone's like, uh, like sexual orientation yeah, there's no, of the yeah. teachers like there's no heterosexual authentication on exactly there and in, in that sense it's like do you yeah yeah it's like do you see the other female teachers just like with dudes like? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then the next scene is in the dark room and caitlin reveals that she's been having weird dreams and lucy wants to hear about them as long as they're not too dirty <laughs> too dirty yeah exactly and what's too dirty in this world? Because one of them is like, like, oh, we can eat popcorn and talk about boys. Pervert. Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That's all I say. Did you guys have, this is, they're in a dark room in junior high. Did you guys have a dark room before high school? No. No. Like, yeah. that must have been just like, like this school had a suite. Like, yeah, Degrassi's got, in previous episodes, they had a pool. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, this school is awesome yeah. for being, like, low class. Like, some of the students are like, isn't that issues in some classes? Like, I can't afford this. Yeah. Like, Your school is a dark room. Like, <laughs> Clearly, they have the funding. Yeah. Yeah, so all that red light in the dark room, too, that tied very nicely mm. into the red in the lesbian <sighs> dream scene. You are all about <laughs> the colors. Yeah. Wow, well, you really good. picked up on the color themes. I did not get them at all. I feel... I feel I feel terrible. <laughs> That's such a great pickup. Uh, the next scene is Arthur and Yick giving a presentation. Of course, Yick is just totally screwing it up. Yes. <laughs> Using an overhead projector with their little marker drawn transparent. Oh. That brought me back to just school. Yeah. Just like, oh yeah, overhead projectors. Like those are all just sitting in a dump somewhere. Like, like talk about yeah, talk about something that they that schools invest so much money in and now never nothing. need. Nothing. Yeah. Just never. Like it's a skill you'll never use. Just like yeah, you just hook your laptop in probably now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like project oh it's so many they just had to wheel those around yeah seriously that was like a whole thing like you would kind of want to because then you got to leave class early sometimes and like bring it back and, and you're like projector mm-hmm. like, like bon- bonus recess time pretty <laughs> much <laughs> let's take a really long time walking down the hall they don't know it's heavy <laughs> but arthur pretty much saves the uh neighborhood watch presentation yeah. <laughs> and miss avery is ecstatic <laughs> standing ovation for a pretty simple presentation and class pretty much ends, and all the girls are getting excited for the sleepover. They're just like you said that line about uh, yeah, them. the popcorn <laughs> and talk about boys, pervert. And then what else is there to think about? <laughs> I don't know if you noticed this. But as soon as they said that, what else is there to think about? Oh, <laughs> girls! <laughs> like oh, that was great. girls! Like that line, like in the I want to read that script of just to read that. So what else is there to think about? Like oh. Exclamation mark! Girls, <laughs> yeah. and it's it is like it must have been planned. Like the writers, again, yeah. the writers, Cruz this Degrassi well, working overtime. Yeah, well good. Uh, Miss Avery calls Caitlin up, and then she's kind of touching her and complimenting her on her Native Studies paper, mm-hmm. just like her dream. And Caitlin gets really uncomfortable, and then <laughs> takes a picture. Yes, yeah, Susie just takes a picture of her like in this uncomfortable moment, <laughs> just for posterity. <laughs> 
Uh, at the end of the scene, too, Mr. Radich uh, kind of calls out to uh, Miss Avery. And Karen. His, Karen. Karen. Mm. Let's, let's go flirt outside the hall. <laughs> he says, have you heard the latest on the rumor mill? Yeah. Yeah, which is yeah. like, is it about her? It's like, they have their own whole... R- and then, you know what they're probably talking about? They're like, I heard fucking Caitlin's a lesbo. <laughs> 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 Watch out, that one in your room I've just been checking it out <laughs> That's exactly what I wonder Like, do they know about the rumor mill the whole way? Exactly. Like, they know what everyone's saying? <laughs> They're feeding into it Like, yeah, next time kiss your friend when she drops you off That'll get the kids going Like, <laughs> They must know. Well, the, like the more teachers I know, too, as an adult watching this show, too, just th- knowing how they would actually be responding to that situation, <laughs> that's kind of legit. What yeah, you're ex- suggesting. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're just like flipping, flipping on them. Yeah. The uh, the next, like just over beside them having that conversation to the in the background, Melanie is with Kathleen and Annie. And see, this is like, Melanie is like this, the voice of of liberal thoughts future oh, yes <laughs> so, so much so. so like you just see every time she starts talking there's like just like they wheel in a podium it's, <laughs> it's, it's like that's what you just see in your mind just like uh, oh yeah and that's it's so like perfect she's like i'm not prejudiced <laughs> like, she's like oh what's wrong with being a homosexual <laughs> like, she's just, yeah. like, just getting in the digs <laughs> uh the next scene cuts to yik's locker which is just overflowing <laughs> With weird, just papers, just like papers and just everything. And a height chart, though. He has a height chart on the <laughs> locker oh. door. They were measuring themselves a couple, I think it was the previous episode. They were doing like a height That's chart. That's some like arrest yeah. development like <laughs> level like, of like, <gasps> oh, we'll put that in there. Like, yeah, yeah just but even before they knew people were re watching. So that was just like a <laughs> yeah. banking on like, hopefully people remember like two episodes ago we were doing this. Like, I feel like, what did the Canadian uh, television award genies? Did the, are they genies or Junos? Junos yeah. is music. Genies. Music, yeah, yeah. Genies. I feel like this, this is terrible that we don't know. Wow. <laughs> the set department should have won a award for this, so just this episode. Like, like so the much background, death. everything about it, so many details that you would just would have missed probably on the first <laughs> yeah. viewing. Like, uh, so outside of Yik's disgusting lar- uh, locker, Arthur. He's realized from doing this neighborhood watch presentation that he wants to be a private eye. Pretty life changing project <laughs> yeah. for him. He's he's like, that's what I want to do. And Yik can't find the twenty dollars that he got from his dad for sneakers. Yeah. And then I was like, where are you buying these sneakers? Like, like even eighty seven. Like, it doesn't that make doesn't sense. Doesn't add up. Like twenty. I know you can get a pair of Jordans for twenty bucks in eighty seven. And I- then also <laughs> like they're in junior high. My my. my- Mom and dad never made me buy my own <laughs> yeah. shoes. Like, go to a shoe store after school and buy your own. Like, my mom would take me. Like, we're going to go get some shoes. And then day. I'm going to yeah. hold the money. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. So she gave me money. It's like, I'm not buying shoes. I'm buying video games or comic books <laughs> or something. Like, Especially with Yik. It's just like, hey, Yik, here's $20 for you to lose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, his bag is already overflowing. Like, yeah, let's put this whim- <laughs> like very flimsy small piece of paper in there. Like. This is really Ick's dad's fault, really. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe his parents are too busy to take him to buy shoes, so I don't know. Do they work all the time? They Well, yeah, Ick's story is his parents are immigrants. He's kind of embarrassed of them maybe because he has oh. to they don't speak English. i don't oh, know it's like, like yeah, i feel like yeah. i'm just t- saying terrible things right now this is <laughs> this is quite a bit of conjecture from my memory and the episodes that i've rewatched well the recently. one with the vase which i i can't i can't just dive into talking about his backstory yeah. <laughs> the we va- learn more about him the vase is coming up in a few episodes yeah. for sure that one where he, <laughs> his his backstory he's kind of like uh i don't know ashamed of his immigrant yeah. family now I just got sad about Yik for a minute. Oh. It's okay. He grew up to be really handsome, so there's that at least. <laughs> Yik's now he's an AD for like in the film industry. Oh, cool. <laughs> he's a Hopefully working Hopefully he's not bumbling and well, dropping everything. Well, with the fine still. example that was set in Degrassi Junior <laughs> High, how could he not be inspired to but, stay with the craft? But with Yik losing his twenty dollars, that sets up Arthur's first case. That yeah. he <laughs> it must be something. Else. It's like. Look through the pile again, guys. <laughs> like, he picked up, like, maybe five pieces of paper. <laughs> You've already shrugged that off, and then just this kid walking by, you're like, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I can't, I've looked everywhere, and he's opening an empty file folder. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you haven't looked anywhere. <laughs> like, I've opened my locker, I sat and I in just realized I don't have it. Uh, <laughs> you're trusting the guy who flipped the fucking projector thing yeah. wrong? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He can't be trusted for much. <laughs> exactly. 
The next scene is the sleepover, which Laura, you had a great uh, another great background okay. dressing catch oh, on the Caitlin bed. Caitlin has a Hudson's Bay blanket, yes, which is very awesome. Canadian. But you would also think if she'd just done this excellent paper on Native peoples, maybe she, she wouldn't. wouldn't have- <laughs> I don't know how in depth her research was. It's a little she problematic, been like, Caitlin Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> like, get this off my bed. Like, so, just saying. Because the Hudson Bay Company would have uh, taken advantage of the native people. <laughs> a little bit. I think they did a little bit quite, historically. Quite uh, heavily. Yeah. But maybe again, see, the set <laughs> department <laughs> was thinking about that yeah. and showing the hypocrisy. was her and her conflicting issues on things. That's, oh, wow. This goes so deep. <laughs> So they make a prank call, and they have a prank call to Mr. Radich was like, <laughs> Mr. Radich on the line, tell him a train's coming. That's so, like, <laughs> late 80s prank call. It's just so, I think like, that's the first prank call. Uh, <laughs> it's so ridiculous of just like, yeah, what? What? Like, <laughs> It's like what the, is the other person supposed to do on the end? Like, yeah, okay. It's, like, it's like the is your refrigerator running? You better go catch it. Like, just yeah, such yeah. a. <laughs> it's like, come on, like. It's like you can't even really be. You don't feel that pranked. Like, you just, <laughs> yeah, you just feel like, all right, so that's like, yeah. an unusual phone, phone call. call. Yeah. Yeah, that's how they're taking advantage of Caitlin's parents not being home. Is yeah. that dropping bombs like that? It's not. <laughs> Did you guys ever do any prank phone calls when yeah. you were younger? Would you have a good one? We had like you know those like on like lap on like PCs you could have those little guys that would talk. You could oh, type and they oh, would yeah. say things with that little purple monkey stuff, guy yeah. or whatever, and we would just type horrible swears or like <laughs> really bad things so that we wouldn't laugh while trying to say them. And then if you just put a bunch of period periods, that would be a pause so that the other person could talk. So we just call people. And the best was just this one old lady was like, the joke's on you. I just called the operator. <laughs> and just like that is stuck with me for like years. I'm just I'm like, I want to put that line in a movie of just this old lady like, the joke's on you. And just her calling the operator. The operator's like, we're not going to hunt these guys. <laughs> what do you, <laughs> what do you want me to do, lady? Like, I'm the operator. I'm the operator. You want me to connect you to him again? Like, but in this lady's mind, like, yeah, she she won. (laughs) Did you have any any uh, prank calls, Laura? Not really. As a a kid, (laughs) um, I think more in university. We once all the soundboards and stuff, Uh, all of that stuff. But as a kid, I think I was I was probably too timid to do that. I didn't want to get in trouble. We played knock knock ginger a lot. Just go knock on someone's door and then run away. Then they come and then you're not there. Oh, I it was so dumb. We, we didn't even do the light the poop thing. We just knocked and then you run away. And then they come out and they're like, oh, nobody's here. <laughs> oh, we, we did that. We called it Nikki Nikki Nine. Yeah, doors, that's what so, we called it too. For some reason. Or you do it. We would go back and you'd ring it twice. I don't know. We would do it once. <laughs> yeah, I guess you do it a couple times. Or we try to like them. steal or move lawn things around. <laughs> just <laughs> Before the internet, eh? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I did one where like. I was with some friends and I got I, I just called like a random number and it was like a girl's answering machine so I was just like, hey this is Johnny uh, we met the other night and I just you know <laughs> give you a heads up and then I like forgot about it and a bit later someone called me back and was like hey is Johnny there and it was like <laughs> super pissed because like, like oh no my my stupid joke I was like oh no I was just like prank calling he's like oh, <laughs> well this is Steph's boyfriend and I got really he was like really <laughs> You're on the phone. You totally could have lied. You weren't in front of anybody. You're like, yeah, I'm sorry. It was just like, oh, consequences. Yeah. <laughs> you became you a man. You could have just hung up. You didn't have the ability to just click. I guess I didn't want him to call back. And call call back. Parents. Yeah, I know. I know. When you're like that, you're just like, I'm sorry for the mistake I made. Pretty fun. I guess successful, right? Like, it got yeah. the rise. The yeah, was they done. were, like, talking about that for, like, a couple... <laughs> Who is this guy? Like, you know what? Star 6 9 and call him back. <laughs> and then she was like, I don't know. And he's like, what? Who is this? Like, you almost ruined a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good prank. See, that's a prank. Yeah, that's, that's a prank. A, Hilarious. That's a prank. Yeah. Uh, and then they have to, they have a hat with all the teachers' names. But, of course, it's the only two teachers with speaking roles. So you can't yeah, call them. Yeah. Right? We're not going to call some random, like, woodworking teacher today. Like, <laughs> they didn't put Doris in there. Yeah. No Doris in this episode, but I was thinking about her. So, Oh, Doris. Which one's Doris? The secretary. Oh, I was going to say, like, is that the secretary? Yeah. 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 So with the sh- when Caitlin gets Miss Avery, she calls her, and Miss Avery, of course, is not home. 
And oh man, there's so much speculation of Miss Avery's sexuality because it's a her friend who answers. answers. The and there was one K Avery in the Toronto phone book, <laughs> which seems plausible. That was awesome. Just like, oh, there's only one. Like, See, I hate Ka- uh, Kathleen so much. Like, I she, know this episode. I was just like, oh, you are just the worst. Because she even it, she says that she saw Miss Avery and her friend just like holding hands on on King Street. <laughs> King Street. Good local reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dropping <For> every <laughs> King Street. What? What? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It could King. be anywhere. Yeah. Could like be maybe school. if it was on Church Street, yeah. I might have yeah. believed them. <laughs> But, <laughs> but it's like King. I don't think so. I saw her in the financial district. district. Yeah. <laughs> they were skipping hand in hand. Yeah. One of them had a briefcase. <laughs> and I just love again. She's just like obsessed with the teacher's love life so much. She knows like everything. She's like, nope, saw her with a girl. I don't see her talk to guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> She's just so concerned. I'm like, shut up. What? <laughs> look at the facts. Yeah, look at the facts. <laughs> Fact number one: <laughs> haven't seen her with a man. <laughs> Uh, pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> super gay. <laughs> and that's why I think she fabricated the hand holding because Miss Avery dismisses it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like, "What? That means this?" You can tell too when Caitlin brings it up to her. that Miss Avery knows it's Kathleen. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, your friend has a vivid imagination, yeah. <laughs> and she's now failing geography. Yeah. <laughs> it also like bears mentioning that Caitlin has a teddy bear. They go into that. I was hoping that like that would have been in the scene that it's like. Oh, what's its name? And then she's like, Shelly. And they're like, Oh, it's <laughs> oh, a girl. Like, you know what I mean? Like, sleeping with a girl, Teddy Bear. Like, she says, No, I just, I just don't want to throw him away. Yeah. But I don't sleep with him. Mm. But later she is. So if she's lying about that, maybe she is gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Teddy Bear is the heart of this. I yeah. <laughs> And then kind of just the, that scene just ends kind of awkwardly <laughs> with the accusations, and it's the next day outside of the school. Kathleen and Annie are sitting there, and Miss Avery pulls up with her, in quotation mark, girlfriend, yeah. <laughs> and their goodbye is like a you know like a European peck on the peck cheek. Like, Have a good day, kind of like. And then they're like, oh. and then she starts talking to, to Caitlin, right? Yeah, I wanted yeah. to just mention the friend though. She does have like a stereotypically lesbian. Yeah, look. they <laughs> totally went for that like '80s businesswoman short hair power look of yeah. like oh, power it, lesbian in like the shoulder pads, right? She had yeah. like a yellow and then like those big, Definitely yeah, pads. like it's it's gaudy it's, it's bracelets hot. and everything. Uh, she can get it, but in the cr- <laughs> if you read the credits, that woman that's just a woman who worked on the show who did that, but she's mm. credited as girlfriend. But, but you like, know, girlfriend. I know, but you girlfriend. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a very ambiguous episode. episode maybe it's and true. The credits because maybe, help. like we said, they couldn't say officially, <laughs> so they are roommate. like. And then that's why say, the end, she's like, yeah. if I was, is that a big deal? Yeah. She should have been like, I mean, <laughs> it's. It's really not confirmed one way or another. No. <laughs> like it doesn't. It it's treading the line as best as it can. Yeah, maybe they're like, we're gonna have a three way with well, Mister. <laughs> like, yeah, she and Radich have some good chemistry too. Radich so. was the best of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> the next seat is in the hallway with Arthur and Yick, and Arthur's got a fingerprint powder out of a, oh, out of a, <laughs> a comic, comic book. book. Yeah. And their plan is to just dust for fingerprint. Not that they have any sort of like database or any nope. information on any fingerprints to just correspond just that to. There's a lot. Which you know, Arthur kind of realizes. He's like, "Yeah, we need a suspect." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I kind of jumped into this. Uh, that kid. <laughs> well, yeah, at that moment, Rick does walk by, starting the, for the first time with a bag full of. Licorice. I love that in this episode, licorice is money. Like yeah. that is like the equivalent of like you got a lot of licorice, you're just giving it away. It, and like, it's just loose in a paper sack. Yeah, like, where's the licorice man outside? Like, <laughs> and it's there for like. And it never seems to, like, end. He just keeps giving the licorice throughout the, after it's introduced. He's bringing it in the bathroom, tossing it on top of the urinals. He's like, he went there. He's like, I need three days supply of licorice. <laughs> I want an amount of licorice that when people see me, they're like, that guy's got money. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want no poor man amount of licorice. I want like whoa, you're rolling in it. In like, your most rumpled sack. <laughs> I want booze. It all. Like get you, you know, a bag that a like a guy like on the street drinks out of. Give me one of those. <laughs> like shove it in there. But then have it all like have the licorice all just be slightly artfully spilling at the top of it. 
Again, the like set, set, <laughs> set in proc, right? They care. <laughs> so Caitlin good. does not take red licorice, though. So oh, the red so theme does it. drop in that she <laughs> takes. She takes black licorice. Oh. oh, I didn't realize he had options too. He has <laughs> black and red. <laughs> <laughs> really? Look, I don't want no one color bullshit here. No. <laughs> he won the I lottery because yeah. you know those lotteries that thirteen-year-olds <laughs> yeah. play. Yeah, when he said that, I was like, he definitely stole it. Like what <laughs> fucking <laughs> bullshit? He won a hundred dollars in. The lottery. <laughs> the lottery. Like, no, yeah, and that, that just uh, after he offers them, he walks into the classroom, and there's Kate, Kathleen spreading rumors now of what, what she saw, or her her version of what just went down uh, out there with them kissing. And again, Melanie just being so rad, right? Yeah, <laughs> Melanie's like, "What's the big deal?" Like, one of her, one of uh, Kathleen's, like. Logic is that she hangs around with her friend all mm-hmm. the time, Caitlin and what's her name. But it's like you do that with your friend. <laughs> yeah, you're always talking <laughs> and whispering into your friend's ear about the lesbians. So it's like you look like a lesbian. Like and that, your logic a, is so ridiculous. That's exactly what uh, Caitlin says. She's like, just because you haven't seen her with a boyfriend doesn't mean she doesn't have one. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of shuts down Kathleen. So as soon as Miss Avery comes in and they start class, Kathleen just like raises her hand. And, and asks, asks like straight up like do you have a boyfriend and that answer hundreds and i was like so instead of just confirming that you may be a lesbian <laughs> you'd rather your students think you have hundreds of boyfriends <laughs> like sure. that's like is this an episode about stds or being a lesbian <laughs> like wow when i was just like he 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 i was like that was just a toss off left like I loved how she shut her down. Oh, it was right. awesome, but yeah, I was just like, "But well, what business is it of yours? yours?" And then I was like, "We're well, not gonna follow up with anything. Like, you're gonna let them walk away." I'm like, "That's a worse rumor." Like, "Oh, she has hundred boyfriends." She said it. Like, that is a worse rumor. That is way worse. Way worse. And you said it. Like, that's the part where I was like, "What?" Like, I guess that they're like, "No, that that's a joke. That, that, that can't be. That joke. can't. Yeah, yeah, exactly." Yeah. I, I think I want to quote Lauren Mitchell from episode two of, of the podcast when she said about Miss Avery, Miss Avery, she a bad bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I'll stamp that. That yeah. is correct. That but I like, too, that they did have her touch boys. and That sounds so weird, the sentence I was yeah. about to say. But she did touch boys and girls equally. Yeah, that, she It did. wasn't like she was only touching Caitlyn. Mm-hmm. Caitlyn was just noticing yeah. But then she would be like, good job, you wrote a good essay. Way to go, boys, good job, good mm-hmm. job. She wasn't, like, just touching the girls no, or anything. Because they kept Arthur, it, like... Arthur yeah. and Yick's presentation, too. She was she equally like, both way to them. go, boys, way to go. And it was always that shoulder, like, mm-hmm. yeah. like <laughs> the <laughs> allowed <laughs> touching. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very appropriate. Very appropriate small touching. green zone of touching. Yeah, exactly. Gets a little further in the dream. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the waist. Hands on the stomach. In there the was, second dream yeah. sequence, that's very intimate. That was very, I was like, ooh, I'm enjoying this. Like, I <laughs> wish I was watching this episode by myself right now. <laughs> um, you know, by law, no no males over the age of 18 can watch Degrassi Jr. <laughs> High alone. <laughs> that's, that's a rule. <laughs> that's a rule. I'm only here as a shop. They're, they're, yeah. they're old now. You know what I mean? This is filmed in 87. Oh. I was not even a baby then. So. Yeah. I think we get the nostalgia factor. <laughs> 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 That's what we're playing into. <laughs> so Rick even odd offers licorice to Miss Avery. She takes it. She mm-hmm. thinks nothing of his hundred dollar lottery win. Yeah, or like this is dirty. This is a dirty. Maybe that day. was him trying to shut down that uncomfortable conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like... And uh, Rick makes his way outside after class, and you see Arthur and Yick. They have Rick down as their suspect. They don't buy this. This licorice lotto win one bit. They're the only one with some sense in them. <laughs> Uh, and they're also kind of there just discussing rumors because the only reason that they really think that it's Rick is because he has this like supposed bad reputation of doing crime or something. Yeah, so they're just like <laughs> connecting the dots yeah. rather than like go back to your fingerprints, man. That was like the facts. <laughs> like now you're just getting lazy. You're like that guy, he stole something once. Like, <laughs> and I think the, the writers too working overtime trying to like bring in all the storylines together where it's like rumors plays a part mm-hmm. in their in beliefs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's just you and your your messy locker. Yeah, they didn't even try to get Rick's fingerprints to do a comparison. They just gave up on that. Yeah, whole yeah. Plan. <laughs> yeah, that's another thread they left hanging. Like mm-hmm. the like the brother in the. Uh, Caitlin's yeah. brother at home. Yeah, like, why do they like? Oh, this uh, this episode was sponsored by that fingerprint tin uh, yeah. <laughs> tin brand. They have. That's why it was right near the camera with the magnifying. Yeah. This was sponsored by magnifying glass and, and the uh, and the licorice board. The licorice board. <laughs> All available at Hudson Bay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
the next scene's in the dark room where Susie and Caitlin are discussing kind of the rumors. And Susie's like pointing out, Miss Avery sure does like to touch people, just like you yeah. said, touching everyone. But they, it's it's the picture from earlier in the episode yeah, that Caitlin <laughs> takes during that awkward moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the scene, they just keep showing like a close, like an extreme close up to on that. Au- Caitlin does look so like awkward. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is like, this is almost like, way ahead of its time a comment on like how we now just document everything rather than actually living the moment <laughs> her she, that character was like this whole episode you know <laughs> yeah, what would a dark room be at a high school like they don't have dark rooms now it's just like some sort of computer lab <laughs> just yeah. like do your photoshop digital photoing yeah. digital photo class just like you can do this at home guy you have like is it even a class now yeah, yeah cuz like- we had one in my high school but by the time i was in high school it wasn't that anymore it was a digital like Photo lab, like and I think a little corner for like maybe the teacher who yeah. did a special yeah. course. They had those. one in my high school, and people actually used it both for developing photos and having sex on yeah. school property. My brother was like, "That's where you go to like do so, pot deals and stuff." So now is it like pho- photography is like okay, this is selfies one hundred and one. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna teach you how to use some uh, so use your hashtags to really get some new likes. All right, get maybe some shares even. Right, yeah. and then like you know all those cool filters, you don't even have to use them; just do them after. Yeah. Like, don't <laughs> I, I, I will dock marks for use of toaster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that one, no thanks. We don't want that yeah. anymore. <laughs> Uh, after the close up on the photo, it goes into another fantasy. Now, Laura, you gotta tell. There must be the same like background again and everything yeah, in this scene. But it's more intense. And they they start with a unison page turn. Oh, I noticed that. Very that children of a corn. Yeah, this whole uh, episode was the, very. The, yeah, the it's first, not episode. This dream sequence. The first dream sequence seems a little more other than the setting at the very start is like a normal class with how she's speaking but then yeah this one starts straight off unison page turn from everybody <laughs> um but yeah all the flowers and yeah it's that same pink thing caitlin's wearing pink and she has heart earrings on oh suggestive oh and one thing i don't know i just noticed when in the dark room oh mm-hmm. when the light was on her she was wearing a thing like the one like black character was wearing a shirt that said don't shoot oh right <laughs> yeah. yeah but it was about photography yeah. but all that printing was really small and just in big bold letters when the door light was on her just said don't shoot and yeah. i was just like holy like obviously that was just a photography one but i was just like why was that the one that's, character that wore that like, that's not even a cool thing to just have in a high school period exactly. anymore but, like yeah. everything about that even, was like yeah, yeah totally didn't even think yeah. It has like a, such a different modern context. Yeah, for sure. yeah just everything about that one is like, nope, thank you. <laughs> so it's the same kind of thing, though, too. Like, uh, Miss Avery calls up Caitlin, showers her with praise for her native studies paper, uh, tells her that she's the best. Uh, and then Kathleen shouts out, You're a lesbian. So she's like, You're gay. And she's just being accosted by the whispers, does the hitchhawk effect. Yeah. And then it had the chance where they're just like, Gay, gay. Yeah. Gay. No, wasn't it wasn't lesbian. Lesbian. Yeah. Lesbian. Lesbian. It's a very trance like. So the first dream sequence is they're saying Ms. Avery's gay. This time saying Caitlin's gay, you know. And that's Kathleen says that. And Susie's sitting in front of her and says, Yes. Yes. I, I know. know. It was so <laughs> creepy. There's like close ups on people's mouths and stuff when they're chanting. Lesbian, and yeah. It's a creepy little dream. It's. It's so cre- I I feel like it must have been I don't think there was anything like this at that time. No, though. that's like, what I'm like as watching I'm like this would be good like now. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had this stupid thought of like they should bring this back. <laughs> they should do it. Do- oh yeah. Oh. 9 12 fucking seasons of it and that's why we have Drake. Maybe yeah. I should uh, remember <laughs> things. It's Bobby. not the like, same the new one. I No, I know it, that's what I mean but- when I've watched it, it it's almost too heavy-handed with like mm, and nobody's like, nobody looks like a dorky Canadian teenager. No, exactly. No one's cute. No one's yeah. like yeah, everyone's too pretty in this story. I still watch it uh like I watched the Jay Silent Bob episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I watched those ones too. Actually, I on when DVD. he was there, on. I was like, I got to see those. I need to know. I love Kevin Smith. Everything that Jay Silent Bob do, I need Which to is see. Awesome. Them. I noticed you were in the Jay and Silent Bob oh, shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nice. Full circle. Yeah, I'm like Kevin Smith. That's the closest connection to Degrassi in clothing I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I love like in in his his movies too when he would have like the little mentions of oh, Degrassi yeah. and yeah, that was and Chasing Amy for yeah. sure. Yeah. I don't know if there's one of Mall Rats, but in those two for sure. And I think like in a later one, there's like a quick reference. Is there? Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah, like a quick, quick throwaway line. Mm-hmm. Jason Bob, maybe. Okay, yeah, probably. Uh, that 
that whole dream sequence so it's just amazing i love the canadian the canadian team there working overtime like to bring a quality show uh it's the next day at school and Susie and caitlin are walking up and they see miss miss avery pull up with her friend and it's just the same kind of thing like a short pack and they're just like oh, see it, i don't know it's kind of showing that it isn't that a big of a deal though I think like just yeah. like the, mm. it's a casual kiss like it's just them reading into it more yeah. than a, you have to kind of thing specifically like, like Kathleen and Annie seeing it yeah, before it's, it's like, more oh played for God. like oh but with it's just kind of like hmm, with them a little bit less and then isn't she doesn't she start talking to yeah, Caitlin of course she does about native studies <laughs> she picked out an article <laughs> <laughs> from and the he's gonna for order her. a book, book for, her. Her. Yeah, <laughs> for the library, the library. Uh, and then Kathleen and Annie, they kind of oversee this happening, and they judge a little bit, I would say. They're like, <sighs> like oh, my God, she's a good student. <laughs> like, I, That's what's so weird is that, like, just talking to a teacher now. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's the story, but it's just like, that's not weird either. Like, fuck you, Kathleen. Like, yeah. you're so annoying. Like, <laughs> Kathleen has a tough life, though, <laughs> which we find out later. I know. I feel bad. She like, comes from <laughs> circumstances. That's true. As yeah. much as I do... Dislike, dislike her. In this she's my least favorite character. But and things I, just get worse for her consistently. Through they this really whole do. There is there's no daylight for her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then when it gets inside, Arthur and Yick are pretty much just stalking Rick at this point. They're just <laughs> like they're they've just deduced he's all because like, they talk about uh, Arthur just saying like no, you know, once a criminal, always, always a criminal. <laughs> and it's like basically the whole like thing. Like with like lesbian, like they're really Doing putting the them together yeah. now at this point. And then that's when this is the awesome joke, the no post. You, oh I think yeah, you've got it. <laughs> there's a couple good announcement jokes in this oh, episode. Okay, yeah. And so there's one where um, it's Mr. Lawrence making announcement. Like if anybody finds a pair of glasses in the gym, please return them to the office or to Alex Yanko, who we see so many times in this episode. <laughs> yeah, for some reason. he's like. But then in the very next cut, you see Alex walking in with his glasses happy on. Happy as pie. The like. system works. But then the other one is uh, he's explaining some rule, um, and uh, this includes the uh, no posters here notice and the no notices to be posted here poster. It's like a Simpsons joke. It's yeah. so good, and you just like miss it if you're not, if you just don't hear yeah, the word. If wording. you haven't watched all episodes of Degrassi <laughs> Junior High a minimum of ten times each, you'll can miss you, out on this. Can you say that second announcement again? <laughs> uh, this was the the no notices to be posted here poster. <laughs> it was so good the wording. And I was like, oh, no notices perfect. to be posted here poster. <laughs> that is that's fucking genius. <laughs> <So good. laughs> With Arthur and Yick's, like, stalking Rick, too, he tot- totally notices. Like, they're not getting away yeah. with it. Like, they're doing, like, the cheesiest, like, he sees them and they duck behind the glass. Like, like, like obviously. Like, Hardy or something. It, yeah, they're like, like Keystone Cop-style buffoonery. He's, yeah. Arthur's trying to act natural, yeah, stroking his chin. Like, the, the yeah. Or whatever. He's like, hmm, I'm just a just... regular man. Like... <laughs> Oh, they're so useless. It's adorable. <laughs> then it goes into the Avery class, and Melanie's talking with Susie and Kathleen, and Kathleen is just, like, going through her poor excuses of why Miss Avery <laughs> is evidence. gay. Completely explainable. But every one of them is being knocked down. And then Melanie has the gem. She's like, even if she is homosexual, what difference does it make? <laughs> Bam! Yeah. Melanie just yeah, dropping again. truth bombs like the whole episode. <laughs> and this is but this is also where they're now thinking that Caitlin is, mm-hmm. right? I mean, like, mm-hmm. Susie, watch out. Yeah, that's what she says. Susie's yeah. like, uh, she's not, she's not a, a lesbian. lesbian. She's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but then the best part, Kathleen says, like, if people start talking about you, don't blame us. Like, of course we're gonna blame you. <laughs> you you are doing it right now. You're insane. Like we just watched you do it. <laughs> that line though could be used like in a different, like more like she's not a lesbian, like don't put a label on her. Mm-hmm. She's my friend. Like almost oh. in a defensive way, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, doesn't matter if she is, she's my friend well, first. But it was totally Melanie, used in a like no, if she's Melanie not a lesbian, said it. she's my friend. It's yeah, like if you're... Melanie said it, that's what it would have been delivered like. Yeah. Like, she's not a lesbian. We're nothing. She's my friend. <laughs> yeah, it was just like you're either a friend or a lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> it's one or the no other. No way, you're both. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work that way. Yeah. They're pack animals. That's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sisterhood. It's so many. Once you go friends. in, you can't leave. <laughs> Yeah, and then Kathleen makes that threat. That's kind of the end of the scene. So she's like, she even says like, "Oh, you shouldn't spend time with her. Be careful when you're in the dark room yeah. with her." Uh, the next scene is in the hallway where Rick's just offering licorice all over the place. <laughs> 
and Susie is talking to Caitlin, and she's trying to bail. Susie's trying to bail out of like their photography thing just because of the threats that Kathleen's gotten inside of her head, right? That's fucking bitch. Yeah, Kathleen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then a Rick walked by, and he offered uh, licorice to to a character who I never remembered other than this scene, where his name was Jose. He was a tall guy bouncing a basketball. Oh yeah. Jose, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember Jose and in they, any like, other made episode. made a big deal of like, giving him a line before we saw him. Like, he was talking <laughs> yeah. about the game or something. And then like he's like, hey, man, you want some? Like, <laughs> and then that's when like they catch he catches them, right? Follow well, them. he goes into the washroom then, and Arthur and Yick follow him into the washroom very creepily. Oh, yeah, and he puts the licorice up. <laughs> he's, he's still got it in the bathroom. That's when I'm like, where well, is he? he takes this everywhere? <laughs> Why do people keep taking, taking it from him? The licorice been <laughs> in the bathroom. Like, on his way, well, the guys gave took it on the way in. I yeah. guess afterwards, you'd be like, "Oh, I'm glad I got it before." Yeah. <laughs> but and they, it's so like weird. They like he sees them just like around the stall watching them. Then they like get in the stall and like stand on the toilets to watch <laughs> over. And he's just like, "What the fuck?" And just ends up throwing them licorice into it. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> it's badass. <laughs> And is, is that when he catches them right after? Or is there another scene? There's still a bit more. They're they're pacing in here. <laughs> and they're letting He's it, on to them at this point. They're letting it crescendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that dream sequence. The next scene's the dark room where I think you guys both notice it. Lucy is just yammering on. Like, and it's I, our, our school sure is interesting. <laughs> Well, I was going to get sent to a private school, but I was glad I got sent here. And I was just like, what? Would there not have been yeah. people in a private school? Would have been it's a ghost school? She's like, very scared. No dark room there. The private school. No yeah. private school dark room. <laughs> <laughs> and Caitlin knows something up. And uh, she gets uh, accused of being gay by Susie just because of the rumors that Kathleen's starting. And she's starting to question her as well. And it just kind of like... Uh, like the whole episode, it doesn't really get cleared up by Caitlin when she was just like, um, well, yeah, well, Susie's like, I just want to know what's going I'm on. Confused. I'm yeah. confused. Yes. So am I. So am I. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Join the club. Yeah, <laughs> oh, right. Every, yeah. Everyone's confused. <laughs> and uh, the next scene is uh, Caitlin in bed talking to her teddy to bear. Her teddy bear. <laughs> Very confessional. Just wa- doesn't want to be different. Yeah, exactly, because it shows that it is, like, such a different time in the acceptance of gay rights. Because now, like, people – she says how she doesn't want to be different. People still pro- – I can't speak for for the gay movement and people not – maybe you obviously do feel different. But I feel like it is more accepted, at least now, where it's – you're different, but, like – Well, there's more, like, pe- just things to, like – relate to or see just in like media yeah. this would be one of the only shows doing mm, that whereas yeah. in now there's shows like yeah, they Glee just, or just shows that have more gay characters that isn't the big deal of them just being gay mm-hmm. you know yes. what I mean like yeah. earlier on it was like if a character was gay it was like a side character for a moment and that was the big deal whereas in now there's just gay characters on TV that are in the story and it's not like they're gay they're gay like but it depends where you are and I, I think her little thing with the teddy bear was pretty realistic i'm sure oh for too. sure <laughs> the kids like yeah. dealing with things like yeah i don't want to be different even if you know even if you can see successful and especially where you there. grow up yeah. too because like oh, growing up in thunder bay like my like few gay friends like still didn't want to come out in high school yeah. mm-hmm. just because it's like that small town like this basically of rumors of just like i don't need a thing being said about me while i'm in high school right now i don't even know what's going on like yeah didn't just, matter the time just trying to get through this here. exactly yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. like when I was in grade nine, there was one guy, Catholic high school too, and one guy who was was out, and he got such a hard time. That was really? like 1997. Like he, like everyone would just kind of like razz him, right? And like I just feel like it would be different now. Like <laughs> I My think you're gonna still have those people, but I think you're gonna have the other people, like defending more so. Mm-hmm. Whereas in I think maybe before people would be like, okay, kind of like you'll only have the one, the Melanie. Yeah. Whereas in now, when I had like gay friends in high school, and someone would be like, oh that guy, I'd be like, fuck you, who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like. So it's definitely those people. I guess both voices have gotten louder because once more people try to defend, yeah. the angry people get even ruder and meaner. So it's but just I guess, as hard. But at least having people in their corner now is more of an advantage, yeah. To feel more comfortable. But I, yeah, I guess just like this way at the time this came out, it wasn't as like. That's why she's like talking to the teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, it's the only person she ha- or person she has to confide. <laughs> the only thing she has to confide Talk in. To Miss Avery, bear. she's like uh, Lauren <laughs> said, a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the next day in class, Miss Avery is handing back the papers, touching everyone like she does, <laughs> like she does. But when she gets to Caitlin, and she says, Caitlin just kind of freaks out. She's like, 
don't touch me. <laughs> she shuts, kind of record scratch moment, shuts down the whole class. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, oh. And I like, like, what's fun, not funny, but weird about how, like, the issue in this episode is just, like, the whole, is she a lesbian thing? But if this were done now, it's the whole touching kids thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one made a big deal of the fact that the age thing was horribly inappropriate. It was just the fact that she was a girl. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No one was ever like, that adult is touching you. <laughs> it was just like, she's a lady, ew. Yeah, it, was <laughs> like, a, it was appropriate touching. But the same shoulders, thing, though, but no one but, was ever like, yeah. that. even if you were to be with that person, it wasn't the adult-child thing ever. It was just, oh, right. yeah. it was just women thing. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah. if it was a guy touching her... Oh, yeah, you're like, just like you said, if the gender roles were different, it would have played so much differently So much different, so show. it's just like... No one was upset about not upset, but that was never the issue. So that's such a funny thing that like those things are now more present right. nowadays. Yeah, of, like, yeah, talking about child like molestation and all that stuff in schools, mm. whereas in like that, it's just like, oh wait, that we're not even going to talk about that at <laughs> all. So that's not an issue. Gay, well, that's an issue right now in our episode. Like in this, uh, yeah, this episode they do get in. There's a pretty with the uh, with Lucy and the one teacher they have. Oh yeah, yeah there's a pretty. Oh, and then there's like a different one, one like, like oh, with later wheels, with wheels. Like sure. I remember that, that one. Dark. That one's real dark. <laughs> that one really oh. like with the car and everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. So when class ends, for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so sad about Neil Hope. Still, I know. that was a very oh. sad, sad end. <sighs> yeah, this one, this comes up a lot on the on the podcast too. It was just like it's really just crazy. Insane. Like the guy who played Wheels, how he, you know, f- was dead for four years before anyone even said anything. Mm-hmm. He died under horrible circumstances. Oh. I feel like I've looked at a lot of different like fan message boards of Degrassi mm-hmm. pretty recently and that's like it's pretty constant like there's a lot of posts of people just like feeling bad about that like yeah. you can see them for like because like, it's just like everyone feels like if anyone knew like this world would have made it better for him you know what I mean mm-hmm. like weird fans of things when they hear of stuff like that you're like I could have done something even yeah. though it's so to separate you know what I mean it's yeah. just that, that weird like guilt feeling well, people have with celebrities it's like you have that with a friend but a celebrity is a friend everyone knows Oh, you know what I mean? So eloquent. it's like, Holy. <laughs> so like a friend when they like like either kill themselves or something happens, you're like, oh my god, I could have done something. So you have that connection because this celebrity brought you joy or understanding when you were watching it. So it's like, I could have been there for them. They did so much for me, even though it's so disconnected. But it's like, I think that's part of like celebrity obsession. It's just like it parallels like it's sad to say this way, but like his character on the show was just so sad too. So yeah. I think it. You just don't think that people's real lives are actually that way. So then when it kind of becomes sadder, it just hits well, hard. Well, yeah, where he ends up, it's kind of like, yeah, the character wheels might have actually gone out that way. Too. Yeah, and yeah. You that's kind what of wanted like, better oh, for shit. the guy who played him. Like, yeah. Sad. Just art imitating life. Yeah. Um, less depressing. Here. I don't understand what Miss Avery's class is. Because <laughs> uh, we, have y- we have... <laughs> it says geography it says on the geography door. geography on the door. You can Arthur give a presentation about neighborhood watch. <laughs> Caitlin and Susie's photo- candid photography project is also for that class. But then at the same time, in junior high, teachers taught different things in the same yeah. class. Yeah. You and know the- what I mean? Like I got, I had like math in the same class that someone had science two periods later, and then a grade seven class had art. You know what I mean? So there's, like, there's, in the, and then there's trees on the board in this scene. There's this big chalkboard drawing, like in fancy lettering, tr- just the word trees. <laughs> and then I think a bunch of tree facts. So I, I don't know what's happening in trees. that room. Well, Miss Avery's the grade seven homeroom teacher. Mr. Radish is the grade eight homeroom teacher. So that's like a short class. But then Mr. Radich te- teaches English to maybe both grades. And then mm-hmm. I don't know about Miss Avery. It gets it gets dicey because there was a hat full of different teachers' names. So there was a hat full yeah. <laughs> to be pulled, unless they just wrote Radich and Avery. Yeah, on <laughs> <a bunch of laughs> so this, but this class includes Neighborhood Watch, Candid Photography, <laughs> yeah. Essays on Native, Native People, people. Yeah. Trees, <laughs> and Trees. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's reaching. I don't know. They didn't. And sometimes, too, the classes would be weirdly mixed with uh, grade eights and grade sevens. Yeah, they didn't really commit to who was what age in the first few. That would happen sometimes, too, though, in my school. Uh, I would be in a mixed class sometimes, like a five, six. So someone could have they might have been all the way failed, but they had to like. No, not even a failing thing of just like for certain subjects, just because of numbers wise with classes like they couldn't fill a whole other five class or a whole other six class so they, oh, they do together. like a six seven split yeah i was in a couple of split classes mm-hmm. i yeah. guess growing up too so and then you'd have certain classes would be together because like the subject matter didn't matter too much but maths and sciences would be separate because it's like you're learning a whole 
other. We're just getting into the education <laughs> yeah. system in Northern Ontario. Overcrowding, am I right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> portables. Anyone have a portable in school? I was in no, a couple I of dodged those. that bullet. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I had a couple portables in elementary and high school. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. They sucked. I think it, in elementary it was kind of sucky because you were there all day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you're just like, I'm in this little shitty box. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's in the cooler, shittier yeah. box. So no one wants to yeah. be here, but that one at least has you feel like it's a person. A, it's a glorified shipping container, portable classroom. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. 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 <laughs> Once I watched The Wire season two, I'm like, I think I took an English class in one of these. Like, <laughs> where all these prostitutes died. I think I took math. Uh, so the episode kind of comes to a head. You know, rumor. It's all episode. They've been about the rumors, and finally the rumor is coming out. As Miss Avery asks to talk to Caitlin after class, Kathleen walks out. She's like, finally going down. <laughs> She's talking shit, <laughs> talking shit on her. And then as soon as. Uh, Caitlin tells Miss Avery all the reasons that they think she's she's gay. They, they're just dismissed, obviously. Like, yeah. it's exactly what you would think. None of them is actually a big deal at all. Yeah, she's like, yeah, I have friends. Like, oh, so if you're... I love that line. It's like, so if you're not married, you're gay? Like, <laughs> yeah. all, all single people are gay. That's yeah. what she said. With, she were, you're always with women. She's like, so that means... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, so that means this? Like, I have girlfriends who I hang out with. And she's like, she saw you holding... Kathleen saw, said you were holding hands with her. She's like, she has a very vivid imagination. <laughs> but she, as much as she doesn't... She denies all the accusations. Still, she doesn't... She doesn't even deny them. Yeah. that she's straight, though, yeah. either. She just counters them, mm-hmm. really, or... Almost kind of like it's not like it with the question matter. earlier with a hundred boyfriends, like it's not your business. Yeah. I'll not make these true for you, but I'm not going to say what is true. Like it's some deep shit. Yeah. She says, the, oh, when we you're always with that woman, we share a house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It costs less. <laughs> costs less. Like, also, you have a kid who doesn't pay for anything. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the other like confrontation moment is Arthur and Yick are are following around Rick. Oh, and, this is my favorite scene oh, of the whole episode. Uh, but Rick has known that they're following around for the last two days, so he tries to get it out of them and tells them he doesn't steal their twenty bucks and has them like in the like the take the grip the with his arm. Stairwell. <laughs> yeah. The dark stairwell. And then Radich comes, just go clears his throat. Just to show them his suit. <laughs> because then he makes them become a runway for him. <laughs> then he just walks by. He doesn't even break up the fight. Because then he goes and grabs their collars again. He was literally just like, I'm going to go hit on Avery. What do you guys think? <laughs> like, you like gonna go bug it. You like it? This like looks suit. pretty good, eh? Oh, wait. I'm going to straighten you up. There you go. Yeah. All right. Peace out, boys. Keep on beating so, them up. So, like, it was so intimidating. So, oh, that was my favorite. Because this whole thing, if you really look deeply into the episode, it's just Raditz trying to get laid. Yeah. That's the whole episode is Raditz trying to get like. I'm going to get Avery by the end of this episode. <laughs> and then he does. It's the hidden C plot. <laughs> <laughs> but he just, I guess he's just on, like, he just like, maybe he over, I want to believe that he overheard what was happening. He was like, my boy Rick? No, you guys are not doing Rick <laughs> like that. <laughs> not my boy Rick. <laughs> and then he's like, and then he came to clean him up like, yo Rick, I got to fix your collar here, but like, hey, you're going to get some, something later. Like, Take some fashion tips from me. Yeah. Check out this, Have you seen this cream-colored suit that I've worn to teach at a junior high oh school. Oh, my God. He's so good. He looks amazing. <laughs> it is a great suit. <laughs> and then Rick pretty much is like, just beat it, guy. <laughs> like, yeah, tells like, him to get, get out of it. there. It goes back to yeah, Caitlin and Miss Avery. And she's like, is that all the rumors? Any other questions? And Caitlin's just like, oh, I was having some dreams. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of thinking about going down on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been so. I would never have talked to a teacher about that. That would be yeah, so embarrassing. And, that's, and she and she says that part when they're out in the hall walking out too. Like yeah. if I was going to talk to a teacher about that, I would not do never. it out in the open. Yeah. I would have saved that for classroom chat. Definitely, definitely private classroom yeah. chat. <laughs> yeah, like well, I've been having some weird dreams. Oh, that's fine. Like, yeah, it's very normal. <laughs> uh, then it just goes back to the lockers with uh, Arthur and Yick again. Yick's locker explodes with paper and they're just like oh well now we don't even have any suspects we're back to square one and then you're just like oh, i found the 20 dollars in here <laughs> you broomhead you broomhead i love that yes that's the best thing the broom mm-hmm. it's been a couple of episodes since there's been a, a broomhead diss i think there oh wait no i'm trying to think of the last episode if there was uh, no, I don't think there was. It's yeah. been a couple episodes since there because there were so many in the first few. So it was good to get a broom head <laughs> broom back head. in. Has, it didn't in this episode. Has Narbo come up yet? But in the first episode, I couldn't even tell what they were saying. It was so Narbo. tough. Like, like uh, so then uh, they get the twenty bucks bucks back, and <laughs> it's just a broom head. Just leaves his locker open while they walk away. It's like, oh, did isn't he? this about <laughs> stealing, you idiots? Like. You just left your locker open. Like <laughs> they're gonna 
take your height chart, yeah. buddy. That's hilarious. I didn't even notice. It's such a long shot, too. I'm just like watching the door close, and it's like, real action was the locker staying open. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you're so dumb. Uh, then it, uh, Mr. Radish pulls up in his sweet ride, honking for oh, Miss Avery yeah. to give her a ride. No, all the C-plot comes into play. <laughs> 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 Miss Avery's uh, asked by Caitlin if uh, she's gonna is the oh you and Mr. Rad and she's like enough of the rumors, rumors. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's she kind of just asked her to what is, what is the phrasing because she's she, like well, she says like Miss Avery I'm sorry I thought you were gay oh okay, that's and it yeah. Avery says, like, there's no apology needed. And anyway, Caitlin, would it make any difference to you if I was? Would you think less of me? Mm -hmm. And then Caitlin has to be like, no, of course not. And then she walks away and smiles like, I'm a lesbian. (laughs) (laughs) Freeze frame. I would like to believe that she's bi, personally. Because I want her and Radich to get it, but like, but And then with the roommate, you know what I mean? Like, all of them, like, Radich (laughs) and the two ladies. I mean, I want every attractive person to be having sex with every other attractive person. Exactly, me too. I just just support them. Whatever she wants, yeah. You're a shipper. You're you're an Avery Radich (laughs) shipper. (laughs) It's good to know you're on that team. I Uh, hope they they had a good time. Yeah. It's just left so out in the open, or just so unclear that... I don't know. I could, I could which really is almost like one. Yeah. the maybe the point of it is just like it's not your business. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like yeah, definitely. We don't want to like because they did take a stance, a heavy stance on it doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But they didn't take a stance on she is and she's proud or yeah. she is get out of her way. She is. Yeah. It was more about like you still have to treat this person with the same respect. Exactly. Yeah. Which yeah. I think that's was what Melanie very, was yeah. throughout the whole episode. I want Melanie and Rick to get together. <laughs> Old bad boy gone good, oh. giving out licorice. Melanie is all about like not being prejudiced. Like I want them to get together. It's so like, weird that Melanie is friends with Kathleen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think and yeah, Annie disappears pretty quickly, pretty and I think Melanie, Melanie was a way better foil for Kathleen. But I don't know why. I don't they're think they're friends. friends. I think they just hang out in school because she wasn't at the sleepover. Was I, later though, they are later in the oh, series. Oh right, they, right, they, right, they right, right. I thought I was, I was just thinking Kathleen about. And Melanie are oh, like I, best I, friends. Yeah. I didn't notice. I forgot that, or didn't notice that Melanie wasn't at the sleepover. No, yeah. it's just the four. Oh, just the yeah. four of them. Yeah. Because Melanie was just like the wise words in school. <laughs> yeah. Because like if she was at that sleepover, she would have been like. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> later in high school, when they're all at a sleepover though, and they smoke a joint, Melanie tells all of Kathleen's secrets. <laughs> That's like oh, a yeah. five years in the future spoiler. That's a why. Is it even five? Hopefully it's. <laughs> <laughs> though. That's, it's more like a three months in the future yeah, thing though yeah. too for me <laughs> I, in podcast years three months but yeah in whole, I grassy know, time grade lapse years that's a measurement of time uh, five <laughs> years <laughs> what well that's the episode pretty much of the of the show do you guys have any um do you have any lessons from this episode i think you nailed your lesson laura do you have any lesson uh, just watching it again, I was wondering as an adult if I would come away with it being like, she is for sure gay and if I pick <laughs> up on it more. I, I loved the, the dream sequences, but I thought um, I just thought it was really well handled in terms of it being 1987 and the stance yeah. they took, which is like, doesn't really matter. You need to still treat people properly. So Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's funny too, I think. Well, not funny, but I think it's interesting that then it was kind of like, the message was it doesn't matter, whereas now they would probably be like pride in who you are. <laughs> it kind yeah. of just shows the change that way. Yeah, like Billy Offen But yeah, they didn't go for a like a, a don't talk about it thing. It no. was more just yeah. And then with the other one, it was kind of like because this one was like who knows, but this mm-hmm. one was like Rick was a criminal. Mm-hmm. But don't judge people on past things and jump to conclusions either, because mm-hmm. you look like an idiot sometimes. Rumor has it. That is bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> and he he didn't steal the twenty dollars, but I feel like he may have stolen that licorice. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, hidden D plot. <laughs> Rick's caper. <laughs> no, it's Rick and <laughs> Rick and the principal there in on a, like a licorice deal. That's why he's like cleaning them up. Oh. <laughs> Principal. Yeah, oh. yeah, teacher. <laughs> the principal's weird because he's always off camera. You just hear his voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Even when like Joey's going into the office, you just yeah. like hear it off. Like, no, <laughs> just, like, yeah. mm-hmm. And don't come out of there again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a decent principal impression. That was pretty good. That it's was... like a C minus, but were still, they trying to do the like a weird Charlie Brown comment with that? <laughs> with that, like you don't sort see of. him, but you hear him. Kind mm-hmm. of. So this, yeah, <laughs> Charlie Brown was like. <laughs> 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 Ended well, on a wah 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 wah. What was your guys' favorite episode of Degrassi, Laura? Oh, that's a tough call. I should have prepared for this question. Oh, yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to. <laughs> it is a, it's a tough one to put you on the spot for. Yeah, 
yeah that's hard this one's up there now that i think about it um i i like once we get more into um wheels and joey and snake all their capers yeah that's true, yeah, yeah, because the Zit Remedy hasn't even really That's formed yet. That's what I was going to say, the Zit Remedy. And they don't really, it's not like an episode where like, we got to start a band, it's just they're rehearsing yeah. for a talent show and they yeah. have oh, it. Oh, my other takeaway from this is that we haven't really seen much LD yet, but if anybody mm. in Degrassi Junior High was a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> it was LD. Yeah. <laughs> I could see Lucy as being curious. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> curious Lucy. <laughs> Oh, what about what are you, Bobby? What's your favorite Degrassi episode? I don't know. I was gonna say, yeah. Once they got involved in the Zit Remedy, oh, big that's... Zit, big Zits fans here. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. That's good. And I just loved good. his hat, Joey Jeremiah. Yeah, once he's got the the fedora going on for sure. The one where Stephanie K goes out on a date with that soap opera mm, star, that's mm-hmm. gritty. That one's that's coming pretty up. good. I really yeah. like teenagers making bad decisions, which is why I like the show and <laughs> yeah. horror movies and everything. That's a pretty good example of teenager making a terrible decision. I like that in the show when someone makes a bad decision, it doesn't really get a lot of times it doesn't get neatly packaged mm-hmm. up. There can be actual consequences yeah, for those things happening. Those yeah. Stuff comes back, like, yeah. It's, yeah, it doesn't like wash away like a sitcom and then everything's back to well, normal. Well, cuz they want they can't like make anything too bad happen in a sitcom because they need those people to play the part whereas here like the characters were a little more interchangeable, droppable, like mm-hmm. they could come back, come and go a little more. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, d- it didn't tend to completely reset at the end of an episode in this. Oh, no. As much as threads would come and go, mm-hmm. it wasn't like it's one. Like, you could watch episodes ad hoc, but stuff came back for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, And you'd be like, oh, yeah. what's that? And you're like, oh, like three episodes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like this show and Freaks and Geeks are the two like best representative of like younger people. They do. They keep it very real in both of those mm-hmm. shows. Yeah, just the way they talk, the insults they have, they're not too smart. Well, sometimes they are like, I'm not prejudiced. Or sometimes <laughs> yeah. it's very heavy handed. But most of the time, how the character gets through a situation is very like yeah. realistic to the age of the person, not like too writery coming through. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if I was that age, I'd say this. But then sometimes it is like, I'm not prejudiced. <laughs> but it's like that character's awesome. <laughs> but coming from Melanie, it works. So. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah, Melanie exists. She was that kind of person. Well, I guess that's uh, I that's think it. that's the episode. I think yeah. we did it. We went back to Degrassi there. Episode six, rumor has it, uh, season one of Degrassi Junior High. Uh, Laura, what's your Twitter handle for everyone? At Laura Delabio. At Easy. Laura D I D I L A B I O. Laura, like you would think. Laura, like you would think. Bobby, what's your Twitter? Uh, at Bobby Knuff, and Knuff is K N A U F F, mm-hmm. and Instagram too. Bobby Knuff and cats. Oh yeah, he's got a great Instagram. <laughs> Some good I love cats his cats. Yeah, yeah, great cats and hop drawer cats. Um, so thanks so much, both guys, for being here, and I'll be back next week with another episode. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you. Peace. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>